In this video, I'm going to show you a really cool middleware offering by Laravel that is known as Terminable Middlewares. And what a Terminable Middleware is, it's a middleware that can execute after a request has been served. And you might be sitting there saying, well, why would I want to use such a feature? Well, to give you a real world example, this just happened yesterday at my work. We had a situation where we were trying to determine if a bug existed on the front end, meaning where we captured the data that a user enters into a form or a multi-step form process, or we were trying to see if the problem was on the back end on the persisting of data because this whole workflow that had been uh, modified throughout the past month. And I was like, well, given this, the, what's kind of at stake here, we need to see what the, what the payload is as this person goes through each step of that ordering process. And I've done this once before, and we're going to do this now, is we're going to basically kind of build that same little feature. And to get started, you'll see that we're on the screen of Laravel's documentation for terminable middlewares. And we're basically going to kind of use the same example that they've given us. And then we're just going to add some stuff to where we can log these HTTP requests to our database. And note, I already have an application that's bootstrapped along with a database that's been created. So with that said, let's kind of jump right into this. So I'm going to create the middleware. It's called Terminable Middleware. And sometimes I have to refresh my IDE to make this show up. So we, we have this. And we're going to go back to Laravel's documentation. We're going to copy this specific method that's called terminate. And so this is going to be the method that's going to give us that, that, that magic, so to speak, that we can log. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a logging point here. And what I want to do is log. Each time that this terminate is called, we're going to log it to the log. Now, obviously, when we first go to do this, we're going to see that there is nothing to be logged. And this is because we haven't told Laravel that we want to use it. So to make this possible, we're going to go into Laravel's HTTP kernel, and particularly this middleware property. And now this is, this is what taps it into Laravel's global middleware to where this will execute on each and every request that comes to the application. So we're going to say app, HTTP, middleware, terminating middleware. And when we refresh and we go back to our log, we have a log entry. Now, something you you might hope is that is that you could do like requests and just dump this out. And in most of my experiences when utilizing this feature, I don't you can't really die and dump it. It's after the request, right? So let's try to decide like what data points we want to capture here. So uh, let's say data, um, we're going to want, let's say we want the session ID, right? Uh, we, and of course, we can get this but just by saying session ID. We might want the IP address, which we can get this straight from the request. Uh, we could sit there and say, is this an AJAX request, right? It's like you say request. Uh, I think it's just AJAX, yeah. Then you might want to know the, the URL. Uh, and then you want the, actually, you'll probably want the full, so you, we'll go with full URL. And then you might want to know the payload. And the payload is essentially what, what is ever in the body of this request. And we're going to say to array. And now let's take this and we're going to go back and refresh and we're going to log. We're going to refresh so that way it logs it right. We're going to go back. Oh, it did not like the uh, the session ID. Uh, let's see here. I thought it was session. It was uh, get ID. That's my mistake. It's get ID. Okay, so let me clear my log back out. Go back. Refresh. And we should have more data points. As you see here, we got session ID, IP address. It's not an AJAX request. And just so that we know that we're getting the full stuff, if I was going to sit there and say, uh, Jordan Dalton, just throwing a query string in here, you'll see that we get that full URL as well. And now that we, oh, and some of the other things you're probably going to want to know is like the response code. 
Uh, we can sit there and say the, the let's see here, response, if I can type, uh, code, yeah, get status code. So we can know the, the outcome of the request. So particularly, let's say like we're looking to see if we got like a 200 or a 404. We could capture that as well. And so now that we have these data points, what we're going to do is that we're going to create a model. And we're just going to call this ATP request. And we're going to create a migration. And I'm going to put this to the right-hand side. I'm going to go, let's see here. And so I'm looking at the data points we have here. So let's go into the model. Let me close these, close that. Nope, I did not mean to do that. Well, split to the right. Okay. If I refresh, and I always get tired of having to do this refresh part. I don't know what's going on with my uh, ID, but if somebody knows, feel free to say something. So what I'm going to do is that uh, we're going to say, we're going to go into our fillable. And so there's just going to be some things that we want right here. We want the session ID. We want the IP address. We want to know if it's AJAX. Uh, we'll just call this the URL. Uh, the payload and the and the status and the, we'll call it the let's just call this the, the code. Eh, let's call it status code. And something else you might want. Of course, we don't have it in here, but you could actually request the like the user ID. You know, so it's like if you were doing like a request user, you know, you could do it like that. So you could actually pin it down to the user itself or themselves. So we're going to take these. And we're going to go, I, keep, I need to pop this out here. We're going to go to the database. And I asked for it to create a migration. Here it is. And what I like to do is uh, have a little method or like a process I go through here. So we can call this, let's call this table. Uh, we call this a string. We'll index it. Uh, we're going to do the same for the IP address. And the thing about the IP address is that, you know, that could be an IPv4 address, um, you know, uh, IPv6. And we're just, we're just, we're just going to try to index a lot of these. Uh, table, we'll call this a Boolean. Make that an AJAX. Uh, of course, like, you know, like I said, a lot of these we can index. We probably won't index this one for the URL, but we'll call it string URL. Uh, this one we're going to want to make this. You might want to make this a JSON blob because you never know in your application uh, just how big those uh, blob objects are going to be. And then we're just going to call this an integer for status code. And we can we can index that as well. And we're not going to worry about doing soft deletes for the sake of the video, but uh, let's see here. So we're going to PHP Artisan Migrate, go to our database. Sure enough, we have the HTTP request table. And let me put this to the right because I have to make one slight adjustment on uh, what we're going to we're going to call this our data. So we have session, IP, AJAX, URL, payload, and this one I called status code and then we can sit there and say uh, app models http request create data and if we've done everything correctly here and we refresh we should actually have a database entry and we don't so what are we missing what is the deal here let's see if we have a thing in our log Oh, here it is. It says array to string conversion. That's right. And that's because we have that one column that we created that was called payload. So we need to uh, cast that field. So what I, like, I always like to put these into a, a collection. So we'll clear this out. If I go back, hit refresh, we should hopefully have a record now. And we do, and you'll see, we have the full URL, we have the payload, we have the status code, we know if it's an AJAX request, we know their IP address. Now, like I said, you could have added like a user ID column 
and you could literally say, well, what, what, what are all the HTTP requests by one specific user in our application? And something else you could do on top of this, you could throw this into a queue to where it gets sent through the queue into the database. And so you could kind of defer that process. But the upside now is that you can literally go and look at all the queries that come through your application. You can see what the payloads look like as they went through certain processes. And thus you can actually essentially know exactly what all the data looked like at the time that a potential bug might have existed. And you could even take it a whole nother level. Uh, there's some, you could probably make a way that you could replay the the actual request, and then you could get that that data that you had missed. You could still get it into the database. So this is the example for terminable middlewares. If you learn something new, I encourage you to like and share. Follow me on Twitter at Jordan K Dalton. Follow me on DaltonCast on YouTube, and if you're looking for mentorship, uh, see uh, the link tree in my Twitter profile. So with that said, I'm Jordan. Have a great rest of your day and look forward to seeing you on the next one.